What's going on fish nerds? Today we're looking at the turtle tank. Alright guys, now before we get into the turtle tank, just real quick, I do want to say I am coming up on 500 subscribers and I want to do a 500 subscriber giveaway after we hit that 500 subscriber mark. So I'll do some kind of contest. I don't know what the contest will be or how it'll work, but I do want to give something to somebody, you, you know, to, to give back to you guys for all the support that you've shown me. I do want to do something. The prize, the giveaway, will probably be a Fish Nerd t-shirt. Not entirely sure yet, but that'll most likely be what it is. And uh, if you've got ideas for how to do the contest, throw those down in the comments below. But just have that in mind. I think I'm at like 481 right now while I'm recording this. So once we hit that 500 subscriber mark, I will do a contest. I'm still figuring out what I'm going to do, but we're going to do something. So just have that in mind. And also, uh, just something I want to show you guys here real quick is this tank right here somebody at work gave me this tank i have no idea what the dimensions are and uh actually somebody else from work has all the equipment and things that go with this tank and they're supposed to be getting that to me uh the girl at work had this set up and she had hundreds of dollars equipment she said in the tank and then just after her fish died she never got any more fish and she just wanted somebody to put it to use and so she actually gave all the equipment to another one of our co-workers uh, because he thought he might be interested in getting into fish but he ended up changing his mind so she gave me the tank and asked him to give me all the equipment and he's already talked to me he's just got to figure out how he's going to get it to work and stuff or or when to to arrange to get it to me so don't know what i'm going to be putting in this yet i don't know what i don't know what size tank it is uh, as far as how many gallons, but that's a 20 tall if it gives you any point of reference. I'm I'm toying with the idea of maybe a bed of sorority. Maybe. Just maybe. But I don't know. That might not be enough left and right for them to get away from each other if somebody decides to get a little bit rough. I don't know. Playing around with ideas, though. If you've got any ideas, let me know what you'd like to see me put in this tank. But now, on to the main event for today's episode. The Diamondback Terrapins. Where are you guys at? If I stand here long... Oh, there's one down there by the pot. If I stand here long enough, they will come up to say hello. Let's see. And if you're wondering... I don't know if it shows up that well in the video enough for you to notice, but the water is tinged green a little bit. And that's because about a week ago, I did treat the entire tank uh, with API Fungus Cure just as a precaution um, I never saw any fungus on any of the turtles they're all hanging out back here but Donnie this one right here that you can see best right there was doing this thing where he would kind of spin in circles and he wouldn't so much do it here in the tank but when I would take them out and put them in their little containers to feed them he would start spinning in circles like a dog chasing his tail, except he was chasing his foot. And he'd be like biting at his foot. So, I took some pictures, you know, of, of him and of his feet and stuff and posted them on TurtleForum.com. Got some expert advice and things. And they agreed with me that it didn't look like there was any kind of fungus issue. But I did go ahead and treat it just in case. Talked to some other people. And from the looks of him, it seems like it's just some weird quirk or weird phase he was going through one person even had a theory that maybe he associates like it's some kind of associative pavlov's dog thing where he bites his foot because he knows he's about to get fed and whether it's because he's excited or just because he associates it i i don't know but he seems to be doing better i don't know but just so just as a precaution i did treat the tank with fungus cure just in case he had some skin fungus that i just couldn't see so the the water's still a little bit tinged it hasn't all 
come out and the water changes yet. What we got down here? Can't tell. Typically I come up to the tank like this and they just all come swarming over to the side. And that is Leo there that just ducked back down. They might be afraid of the camera. I don't know what's going on. That's Donnie down there. There's Leo there that, out in front of the plants. I can't tell who that is back in the back. Oh no, that's Raph behind the plant there. Here's Donnie. Donnie's usually one of the first to come up and say hey. And either they're not hungry or they're afraid of the camera because normally I'll get all four of them right up here climbing all over each other trying to get to me. What's up, buddy? I'll come around here see if I can get a better angle on them. Seem a little better. There's Leo. Donnie. Focus on him. I really like the head markings Donnie's got. There's a raft down there behind the plant. What's going on, Leo? This is Mikey here. And I do have some coals from the sword tails and a few guppy coals in here. So far I haven't noticed any of the fish disappearing. Uh, so, but I have seen a few times, especially when I first put the fish in, the turtles would chase the fish. It was like every time they would get close, the fish are just too quick and dart off at the last minute. and They chase them a little bit, but then they realize it's kind of futile and they give up. And down here, this thing right there is uh, a piece of uh, what you call it, uh, cuddle bone. Just for them to, to chew on, to have it available, which they've already got all this crushed coral that they can munch on for calcium, but I threw that in there. and I, They've not messed with it. It floated in here for a while and then it sunk down. It hasn't really started breaking down yet, so I haven't pulled it yet, but I haven't seen them mess with it at all yet so they may just not need it and if you've seen earlier videos you'll know that there was water lettuce in here and there's still a lot of fragments of water lettuce in here but I don't know if it's just been dying off because these lights aren't enough or which I'm not sure if that's the case because the swords still seem to be doing good and I mean Java Moss is low light but it's doing good or if they're actually munching on it which I was told they wouldn't but they very well may be or it could just be that them climbing on it and holding themselves up floating on it their claws may just be tearing it up or they may just be shredding it up for fun I don't know but the Amazon swords seem to be doing well even though they're just floating or at least they're maintaining they're not getting any worse than what they were What's up, buddy? Donnie's my buddy. He's usually not that skittish, so I'm thinking they are scared of the camera. Isn't he just a sharp looking turtle? But these are concentric diamondback terrapins, which means instead of just having spots all over their face, they've got those squiggly lines. So it's just basically just a color morph. I really like Leo's shell pattern. Looks like he's got a little bit of plant stuck to him. But for filtration, if you've seen my earlier videos, I apologize because you already know this, but I do have the tank drilled here and then it drains out through this pipe into the trickle sump filter which I have a video on how to build I'll link to that and then it comes 
right back through this return line into this DIY spray bar I made and it's just a strip of PVC that I drilled holes in and attached with a adapter there but these guys they love to hang out either in this plant every now and then they'll hang out on this one but this one doesn't stand out of the water as much if they're gonna be resting or they'll just float on the Amazon swords or they'll hang on to the overflow I do have the uh, dock for them to the basking dock for them to get out and bask under the UVB light and this is a UVB and heat lamp combined in this bulb so they do get their UVB rays which turtles do need they need more than just a heat bulb they need the UVB for their shells and I'm gonna have to do something with this let me come around here because this is just a piece of cork wood and I've got it tied off here just to keep it from floating around in the tank and keep it under the light but when they were smaller this was light enough they could climb on it and it not sink but now they've gotten big enough or I don't know if it's happening with just one of them climbing on or if it's when two or three get on at the same time but it's actually sinking down when they climb on and it's getting wet and it's staying wet up here which is bad because they need to be able to get on a completely dry surface so that the bottom of their shell can completely dry out because they need that in order to prevent shell rot they, they need to be able to dry out completely before they get back in the water and unless they climb all the way up here they're not getting that so I either need to build something else or I need to erect something to support the bottom of this to keep it from sinking down so I'm gonna have to work on that and this lid here is just a temporary thing I don't think especially now that this spray bar is sticking out from the wall it was up closer to the wall and I was kinda of paranoid that they would pin themselves in between the return tube and the wall and climb up and out of the tank because I've read horror stories about turtles being escape artists and getting out of their tanks. Didn't want that to happen, so I've just got this duct taped all around the back to keep that from happening. But I think what I want to do is I want to build like a, a like a little plywood wall that comes up from here up and then drill a hole in that for the return line to go in. So even if they did climb up, they would just be on that wall fall right back into the water but then a, build the basking dock off of that and just replace this and so that way I can just mount the light to the back of that wall and have it right down on the basking dock with that right in the middle of the tank is what I think I plan on doing so the basking dock you want the the temperature down here to be in the low 90s and I use just this digital thermometer I just throw this on here to check that every so often make sure it's the right temperature and I'll throw it in the water as well to check the temperature of the water want that to be around 80 to 82 right now with them being younger turtles once they're adult turtles they can they'll do just fine with mid to upper 70s water temperature but uh, for now with the younger turtles while they're still growing it's good for them to have water temperature in the low 80s so that's where I've got it now which it's in the low 80s in this room anyway but I do have a uh, heater over there in the sump filter as for feeding these guys I if I'm in a, a hurry and I don't have time, like if I'm gotta be out one evening so I don't have time to like get them out and let them eat and put them back in and things, it's just like a, I'm stopping in the house, feeding everything and running back out for the evening, I'll throw food in here. But otherwise, if I will actually take them out of the tank and I will fill each of these about a quarter of the way up with tank water I need to clean these too because I let them sit out last time and they dried out and residues all caked in there and it's gross but 
I fill these about a quarter of the way up with tank water and I put the turtles in here and I feed them individually in their own tubs. That way, one, I can control how much food each turtle gets rather than just throwing it all in the tank and hoping one doesn't outcompete the other for food. And two, all the mess involved doesn't go in the tank. So uneaten food stays in these tubs and doesn't end up in the tank and foul in the water. And also, if I leave them in there for a little while after they're done eating, generally when they go to the bathroom, it'll still be in these tubs. So that way I can just dump that out and they're not going to, bat to the bathroom in this tank, which helps even more with keeping this water clean. Ooh, focus. There we go. So if one of these will... I'm kind of surprised they're scared of the, the camera, but if any of them were to have come up, I would pick them up and let you show them. Or let you show them. Show them to you, let you see them. But somebody just went up under the dock. Who's that? Who we got here? That's Leo. What's up, Leo? Got Raph hanging out down here. Raph's the hungry one. Raph's always done eating faster than anybody else. But speaking of eating, back to that, lost my train of thought. What I feed these guys is I've got Missouri Aquatic Turtle Diet, and none of these do I feed more than the other. I just rotate, eat one time I feed this, and the next time I feed this, then this, then this, and I just go through the rotation. But I've got the Missouri Aquatic Turtle Diet. I've got Omega-1 Turtle Pellets. These are the juvenile, since these are still growing turtles. Got that, and then Saki Hikari, turtle pellets these things are pretty big and they stink oh my goodness I mean but they like it but man it stinks and then I've also got the Reptamin juvenile turtle formula over here and where I've got more oh here we go Omega-1 shrimp pellets which isn't necessarily intended for turtles but they love it and it's got a good ingredients list and nutrient profile for them to have that in the rotation. And these three and this were all recommended to me by uh, a Diamondback Terrapin breeder on TurtleForum.com. So these are the, the foods I've got in the rotation along with the Reptamin. And also, once a week or so, maybe once every two weeks, I will feed ram's horn snails. So I'll give them each a few of these snails, which coincidentally is a large, not necessarily ram's horn snails, but snails are a large part of terrapin diets in the wild. So obviously a great food choice. But uh, not only is it a good natural food for them, what they would eat in the wild, but it's also uh, very good for their crush plates. They actually have in their mouths, they have a plate that uh, crushes up shells of snails and uh, different invertebrates and things like that, crabs, things like that, that they eat in the wild. And so feeding them the snails gives them something hard to munch on to help wear down that crush plate similar to you know feeding snails and clams and things like that to a puffer fish all right guys I hope you've liked this video if you have give it a big thumbs up I really appreciate you watching especially if you've watched all the way to the end of this video I thought this was gonna be a short video because I didn't think I had that much to talk about and I've gone a full 20 minutes so 
kudos to you if you've watched this far and if you haven't already hit the subscribe button and hit that little bell notification icon because i am putting out new videos every friday morning and if you hit that little bell it'll notify you so that way you don't miss any of my future episodes thank you guys so much you're awesome god bless you fish nerds i will see you next time